two years ago, Tahrir Square was the symbol of hope. Everything that happened there had such a large impact on the country and everyone was really looking at Tahrir Square and the people that were there and the things that were happening there. Jerusalem Post reporter Melanie Lidman covered the Egyptian revolution in Cairo's Tahrir Square in 2011 and recently returned to Israel from her second visit to Cairo where she covered the revolution's two-year anniversary. Speaking to J-Post TV about her impressions two years later, Lidman said that people are still dealing with the same frustrations, with a battered economy and ongoing lack of stability in political freedom. When they say, when they have the same chance, social justice, bread and freedom is one of their chants, it's because they've been fighting for two years and they haven't gained social justice, bread or freedom. If anything, they have less social justice, less bread and less freedom now. And people are tired of a revolution. People just want stability. People want the economy to start recovering. Um, people are, you know, you can't sustain the energy and the passion that you had two years ago when people are having trouble feeding their families. One person said to me, it really drives me crazy when the international media refers to Morsi as a democratically elected president because he's done so many things that are not democratic and if you look at objectively the political situation two years ago and the political situation now, despite the fact that we've toppled a dictator and despite the fact that technically we had a vote for president, we're actually worse off and we have less political freedom. Um, I think on a personal level, that was uh, it was hard to it was hard to hear because you see how hard they worked two years ago, and to think that okay they've toppled a dictator and they're actually in a worse spot politically, um, you know it's not the happy ending that you want to hear, and I think that as a journalist kind of parachuting in to the story uh, two years ago and then again just now. I was surprised at the, uh, at the hopelessness among, um, among Egyptians. Uh, the hostel that I was staying in, um, the owner of the hostel has a uh, hair that's very similar to mine and I commented on it and I asked her, you know, is it okay for me to walk around with hair like this? And she said, and she's been very involved in the protest herself and she said, absolutely, you have revolutionary hair. And I said, what does that mean that I have revolutionary hair? And she said that in Egypt, um, Traditionally, there's been a large emphasis on Western standards of beauty. And since the revolution, there's been a uh, movement towards being proud of the things that make you Egyptian, being proud of your Egyptian heritage, and embracing the, uh, the em embracing things like curly hair and not straightening it to look like the movie stars coming from Europe, but rather embracing the things that make you Egyptian. And I think that that's really indicative of uh, of what's going on of the of the change in the uh, Egyptian psyche is that you know things are harder now certainly there's less money there's less jobs there's less uh, political freedom but Egyptians have changed and Egyptians have this uh, knowledge inside of them that two years ago they toppled a dictator together and you know no matter what happens you really can't take that knowledge away from them that they they were able to affect this momentous political change. The entire world was watching them. Um, and no matter what happens to them and what kind of dictatorship they're under now, they'll always have this knowledge inside of them that they had the power to change it once and they have the power to change it again.